Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint & Sip and this is Paint & Sip at Home. So today I'm in Tuscany, Italy. I'm going to be painting this incredible landscape of these beautiful cypress trees. Uh, I'm going to be sipping a little bit of Chianti. Uh, so let's just get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials that we're going to use today, you've got a 16 by 20 stretched prime canvas. Uh, you can get this at any of your local craft stores or online. Uh, you're going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes. You'll need a paper towel for drying your brushes. And the brushes that I am using today is a one inch wide bristle brush, a number one round synthetic brush. You also need a pencil for, an, for your initial sketch. And I'm just using a, a generic, whoops, number two pencil. I'm using acrylic paints. The colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, green oxide, raw umber, Mars black, chrome yellow, and orange. Um, you can certainly, again, switch up these colors if you'd like, but that is all that we're gonna need for this painting today. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for step one is I'm gonna be doing an initial sketch just so I can kind of um, keep certain sections separated. Um, I'm gonna be separating the sky from the back mountains back there. Um, and I'm gonna be doing that about halfway down my canvas. So I'm gonna just visually pick a halfway point. The composition of this painting is gonna have these trees going all the way to the left and the right of my canvas. So I'm just gonna do um, the, the hills behind it in kind of just like a generic shape in through here. I know that there's a little bump going over there and then maybe a little bump here and then the next thing that I'm going to separate is where that back green mountain hits the ground back there where there's brown um, so I'm going to bring this down maybe about to here and then if the center of my trees is going to be about here I'm going to call this let's come up a little bit and this again this sketch is just a really basic sketch um, and we're going to be, I'm not even gonna separate, my trees are coming down to the bottom of my canvas so I don't even really need a different color down here. Um, so that's gonna be my basic sketch. The next step that we're gonna do, we're gonna use the big brush, uh, the one inch wide bristle brush so you can get this out and get ready for the next step. So for the next step, you're gonna be using your one inch wide bristle brush. We're gonna be painting the sky. I'm gonna be doing it a little bit darker at the top and coming down lighter towards the horizon. I'm gonna be using primarily blue and white. I might throw in a little bit of a softer color down at the horizon, but I'm just gonna be starting with blue and white at, up at the top. I like to paint the edges or the sides of my canvas so that way when I am done and I go to hang it up on the wall, I don't have to worry about putting a frame around it if I don't want to. Um, and what I do is I start a little bit darker up at the top and then as I'm coming down, I will pick up either less blue or no blue at all. And then what will happen, I'll just be picking up white and what will happen is this sky on my canvas will naturally just get lighter and lighter as it comes down the canvas. So that way, I'm, I don't even have to wash the brush. It just be, it creates its own natural gradient because I don't, uh, I'm just letting that original dark blue work its way off of my brush. And you can see at times I go back and I'm just kind of um, going left to right, maybe painting over or making sure a previous spot was fully executed. Um, sometimes I go back just to continue or add to 
that gradient, make sure it's fully executed. Um, but I'm really just kind of cruising along here and you can see how this sky and my canvas is naturally getting lighter and lighter as it's coming down that canvas. Again, because I'm not washing my brush, it's just that original blue that I used up here is working its way nicely off of my brush. And because I'm just picking up that white, it is getting lighter and lighter as it's coming down towards that horizon. I'm gonna be bold and I'm touching my brush a, a little bit into the brown so I get a, a little bit of warmth down at the bottom of this uh, horizon because that's what I'm seeing. Um, off in the distance. So I just touched my brush into a touch of brown to get this like really natural glow down at the bottom that's happening. Um, and that's something that I'm just doing uh, uh, improv because I'm seeing it and I wanted it to be have a nice natural um, hue to it. So again, I just did it over on this side. My sky still looks nice and light as it's coming down, but now it's got a little natural tint to it at the bottom. And then I'm just going back, making sure I have everything kind of uh, blended well. And then I am gonna be using this brush for the next step, but I'm going to wash it and dry it. So after you're all done with this step, just wash and dry this big brush, this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be painting that back hill or the back mountain in a just a really generic fashion. The colors that I'm gonna be using are green, black, blue, brown, and white. Um, mostly these four colors over here, but I do want white in there to lighten it up a little bit. The reason why I'm using blue is to set that mountain apart from the front trees that I'm going to be doing and our eyes can't see certain colors as these hills go farther away so that's why I'm making it a little bit more blue so it will visually put it in the distance. Um, I'm going to be using just a dotting technique to do this. I'll be using my one inch bristle brush so I'm going to start with um, all four colors on my brush the green, blue, brown, and black and I'm just gonna be dotting this for now. I got quite a bit of black on my brush, so I'm going to, uh, I just added some more green to my brush to lighten it up a little bit. And again, I really want that blue and brown in there to set this back in my canvas. Um, and I'm just dotting it this way. It will give it some nice texture, and I probably won't have to do much of anything to these, um, to it after I'm done because, oops, I just got a little yellow on there too, but that's all right. Um, because with this texture, it's gonna give you the illusion that there's treetops back there, um, that there's little hills and valleys, uh, but definitely you wanna use that blue in conjunction with it to, again, set it back um, behind. You don't want it super, super blue, but definitely a little bit of blue in there is going to give you um, a lot of depth in it. And I just picked up some brown. And you can see I've got different color spots in here. I am watching my, um, my distant hill, but I don't need it to be exact. Um, I can have some lighter spots in there. That's where my white might come into play. So I just added a little bit of white on my brush. Maybe I have a, a darker little patch in through here because I do see a little bit of a darker patch. Um, so you can certainly play with um, these almost patches of, of colors and get them to be similar um, as to what you see back there just by doing a subtle switch of colors on your brush. Um, but again, I'm using a lot of brown, green, black, blue, and I'll use that white as just a little kind of highlight at the tops of some of these sections just to give it that little that little punch maybe there's a little bit of mist that's rolling by that I'm detecting um, but again this is really going to be just background noise 
for the main painting of the trees. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail here. Um, I just really wanna get a, a similar color palette back there. So when I do put the, um, the, tr the front trees on, you'll be able to see the difference between the two because these back ones are definitely gonna have some blue in them where the front ones will not. Um, so I'm just kind of finishing up here and you can see I've got a, some good color variation going on. Um, I see that there's maybe a little bit lighter of a spot in through here. So I'll use a little bit more white um, just to get some lighter areas going. I might do uh, some little details later poking through the between these trees so you can um, detect some real life back there. Uh, but at this stage, this is really as far as I'm gonna take uh, this back section. And then let me just kind of give a little bit more detail up here just as I'm, I'm seeing it. You do wanna make sure you get this all the way to your sky and don't have any white space between the hill and the sky. But that's as much as I'm gonna do for this step. Uh, we are gonna use the big brush for the next step, so you'll wanna wash it and dry it and just get ready to go on in a minute. Okay, so for the next step, I'm gonna be using my bristle brush. I'm gonna be doing this last section of land, which is behind the trees. Uh, I will be using brown, white are gonna be my predominant colors. And then I'm also gonna use a little bit of yellow and orange. So I'm just gonna start with brown and white. I'm gonna be doing it in um, more of a painted uh, stroke as opposed to the dots that I did up here. Um, that way it'll look smoother, just like it looks smoother to me off in the distance. Um, and this way, if you wanted to have some light spots and some dark spots, you can certainly do that with this type of paint stroke. So again, I'm just kind of moving along with the brown and the white um, getting some lighter spots and some darker spots and then I'll incorporate a little bit right now I just picked up a touch of orange just to kind of get some really natural tones in there and I'll do the same with a little bit of the yellow in a minute um, but this is going to really bring it to life and make it look a little bit more on the natural side which is where I kind of oh that was yellow and white at the same time unexpectedly on my brush but that's all right I was going to do that anyways um, and here I go I'm just kind of making sure that it, it goes all the way up to this tree line so I'm just really almost pushing it in through there that way I don't have any gap it's okay if you make this line messy as it's meeting that back tree line so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of painting them into each other and that way Again, it will look really nice and natural. You could dot it, you could you know, do as I'm doing, which is just kind of a left to right motion. And then I wanna just make sure I get all of my spaces filled in, in through here. And again, just like um, this hill here, this is simply just background noise for the star of the show, which is gonna be these beautiful cypress trees right in front of me. Um, so I wanna just make sure I get some good coverage back here. So that way I don't have any naked spots on my canvas uh, and just making sure this is fully fully executed. I think I want a little yellow over here too just to carry that color over here and then once you're all set uh, we are going to be using this big brush for the next step so you're going to want to wash it and dry it and then just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're going to be doing the first layer of these cypress trees, and I'm gonna be using black paint only. I'm gonna be using my bristle brush. So um, I've got in my head this laid out a little bit to the, to the right, not totally off center, or not totally centered, um, you could, if you've got that A-type personality, you could totally center it if you want to. I'm going to be using black paint. And what I'm doing is I'm really just kind of initially putting some place markers um, 
on my canvas just to see where I want these to go. Um, what I'm also doing is looking at them in ratio in height to each other. Again, you don't have to, oh, I want this to go all the way down. I don't want it just to go to here. I want it to go down farther because these are going to take up a lot of my canvas. So this next one I know comes down a little bit further on my canvas and is a little bit taller than that one. And you don't have to do every single one like I'm doing. Um, this one, I think I want these taller actually. I'm kind of just playing with this height for these first couple so that way when I get to the rest of them, I've got, I can just do them in relation to these first couple. This is what place markers are, are for in my book. Um, I think I want this one somewhere in through here. I've got this one and I might run out of room, but we're going to, we're going to give it a shot somewhere in here. I might go a little taller. somewhere in here and I know that there these are um, you know they go around but I'm just kind of doing this front kind of row of them and then if I need to fill in any gaps I can do that later so now that I've got that I'm going to come over on this side and do a similar thought process just get my little place markers in here um, Make sure this one doesn't come down any farther than that one does. And then based on your viewpoint, obviously you can kind of alter this a little bit. But again, I'm watching those tree tops to see who's taller than the other. This one's gonna be the tallest of the bunch. And then I've got a couple of shorties in through here. So all I'm really doing is looking at them in relation to the one that's either next to them or along the, the sight line. Uh, one, two, three. And then just kind of painting them accordingly for my place markers. And then once I get these place markers in here, I'm going to just fill out the shape. Um, we're going to be highlighting these uh, in a little while and making them more realistic looking. But right now, I just want to give them a little bit of shape. So I know that they're pretty pointy at the top. They just bulk out a little bit in the middle and then they're more narrow again as they get down towards the bottom. It's not a huge dramatic um, shift, but it definitely is there. I might have my trees a little bit closer together than they are in front of me. Um, so my trees are gonna touch just a little bit more in this um, bulky area, but that's okay. That's, uh, again, what the joys of painting are all about. You get to improv things, because um, I do, there's space between those ones, and mine might be a little bit closer together and have a little bit less space between them, but that's all right. And then I'm gonna just, again, bulk these up in the, in the centers of them and make them a little bit more narrow at the bottom. And when we put that final layer of, um, color on them that's going to also get them to be bulkier and make them to look like they've got some more life in them but right now we're just getting the basic shapes on here uh, and making sure we've filled the canvas enough these ones are going to end up kissing one another down and through here and same thing with these ones so Mine, again, are obviously a little bit closer. These ones you can't even see behind them in all actuality, so that's okay that these are nice and close. Um, and I'm just getting these to fill in a little bit here. This is gonna come all the way over to the side of my canvas. And again, I'm just using black. You can see I'm kind of running into um, some wet paint down at the bottom, but that's just gonna add to the um, to the texture of it and the and the colors of it. Uh, so this one here, it's a pretty narrow one. And again, I'm just going to bulk it out right in this midsection. And same thing with the. This is the same tedious kind of step throughout these is just getting them to look a little bit fuller in the middle. This is going to be a crazy fun big one here. 
Um, so I'm going to get it to be a little bit thicker up on the top. And just, again, bulking it out down at the bottom, but keeping it a little bit more narrow at the bottom's edge of it. And same thing with these. Just kind of bulking them out in the middle and getting them to be a little bit more narrow at the bottom. And then once we are done with this step, we are going to be using that small brush. So after you get done filling, filling out the, the width of these trees, you can put your uh, big brush away in your water cup. And then we're gonna take out that small brush. I'm just kind of peeking through here and I'm not seeing any separation back there. So these are gonna get filled in nice. Get them a little bit wider here. Sometimes I forget to look up. Uh, I get so kind of engrossed in the, in the painting itself and forget to look up at what I'm actually painting. So that's kind of all as far as I'm going to bring these at the moment. Um, so at this point, I'm going to put my big brush in my water cup and I will take out my small brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to be using my small brush I'm going to be adding little tiny details uh, at the bottom of this hill. There's a couple of little structures back there. I'm not going to be doing much other than adding little shapes um, so you, you can have the depth perception of this. Um, so I'm going to be using definitely brown and white to get these shapes into place, but I'll probably be incorporating a little yellow. Um, and orange as well. I see three little structures back there. So I'm really, I'm going to do just these little tiny um, marks. I've got a rectangle here. I've got a box here. I've got another little like rectangly thing in through here. Maybe I've got um, some green grass behind here, which is what I see up there. So I'm just, if I can incorporate any little um, information back here that might make it easier on the viewer to understand what they're looking at, that, that helps. Um, I'm gonna just add some additional dark colors down at the bottom. I'm looking up at my um, landscape in front of me and I'm seeing that there's a little field, there's some, some grassy areas around these buildings. So all I'm doing is just incorporating a couple of little additional colors down here to give um, the painting more depth and have more information for um, the viewer to look at back here. And again, I'm not really doing much other than um, putting in this little field, uh, adding a couple of shapes for buildings, but nothing, nothing really involved um, because we could really kind of get lost in this landscape because there is a lot, of, a lot of information, but I'm just trying to keep it on the simpler side, um, keep this a nice beginner painting and uh, get you to be able to accomplish it in a, in a nice quick and simple fashion. Um, and this is fun because it's an impressionistic way of doing it. Um, but that's really all I'm going to do for, for this information back there. Maybe I, maybe I put a couple of little windows or door, or just a couple of little marks on these buildings to give them a little bit more information. And, 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 that, and that's all I'm going to do. So after this step, I'm going to, um, what am I going to do for the next step? I'm going to switch brushes back to the big brush. So I'll put away my small brush in the water cup and take out my big brush for the next step. All right, so for the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to finish the cypress trees. I'm going to be using my big brush. I'm going to be using predominantly green, um, but I'll also be using orange, yellow, and I might use my black and my brown as well. 
um, because I'm seeing these shadows and I might, you know, need to go back into those. So I'm going to start with green to um, get the, the, the lighter side of the trees into place. And my sun is over to the left. So predominantly the left side of the trees is light and the right side is dark. But then you've got a couple of trees in here that are casting shadows upon each other. Um, so I'm gonna just initially go with my rule of they're light on the left and dark on the right. And I'm gonna be doing like a quick kind of um, like a little skirty motion with my brush. I don't want to um, color this in all the way because I really want to be able to see some of that black underneath. So that's why I am going to um, just do this skirty kind of um, brush stroke. I do want to get some up at the top. Um, and if you find that you want to use your little brush, you can certainly do that. But I want to definitely get these brighter sides to the, um, to the trees. The thicker that green paint is, the more you're going to be able to see it. Um, so when you want it to go on to that darker side, you just use less on your brush and you um, dot it or paint it less. And that's going to allow you to see the separation. And as it dries, it will get a lot darker. So I've just got, um, this will take me a minute to kind of go through these and just get this initial, I got a little bit of blue on my brush here, get these initial um, strokes on here to identify these trees. I know that there are some in the background that I might be skipping here, but that's all right. And again, I'm leaving the right side of that tree much darker. I'm kind of incorporating the fronts of these trees or the, the trees in the front are gonna be my dominant ones for this, for this particular painting. Um, and that's, that's my, my right to do so. So I'm gonna be doing the, the, front, the front trees um, predominantly. This is a fun big one here. So again, it's just a, almost like a skirting kind of uh, brush stroke that I'm using. I'm using mostly the, the corner of my brush and I'm just using green at this point. This is gonna be just my starting, my starting color. Um, it's going to give me a good base. You can see I'm, I'm preserving a lot of that back, the, the, a lot of the black behind it. Uh, this tree is definitely being shadowed right now. Uh, it's behind there, so I'm gonna put my green down here where I see it and up here a little bit. So it's gonna end up having a shadow on it. Um, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black and, and just so I can have some texture on this tree right now. And it's darker. So all I did there was I picked up some black so that ends up being a little bit darker. So I can see that this one is also in the shadow so I'm gonna do black and green on this one. So that way this one can also be in the shadow except for that tippy top that is peeking out and saying wait wait i can see the sunshine up here and when i go to do those extra highlights in a minute the that will uh definitely shine through there i've got this one over here with which i'm just going to be using my green paint and this one's really nice and bright on this side so again, green is gonna be my predominant color starting here just so I can get this highlight on. And then I'm gonna to start to incorporate the yellows and the orange and, and white if I have to and brown if I have to. Um, this next tree I'm seeing is it's bright at the top but it's also in the shadow. And if I don't paint fast enough, these shadows are gonna start moving on me. Um, let me just kind of get these bright tippy tops as I'm as I'm seeing them so they don't so I don't lose them in a minute here this one is definitely over on the side I can see that little guy poking through back there and then this one is really bright also so as you can see it's it's a you know it's a it's a 
situation where I, I've got to decide which trees I'm going to give this bright green to. Um, I am on this side coming back in with some, with some black and green like I did over here. So that way I do have a base coat um, on the areas that are, that are sitting in the shadow, but the, it's a darker base coat um, than that vi the vibrant ones that are in the sunshine. So again, this, this has black, I have black on my brush right now, so I'm incorporating um, these darker green tones to the places that are in the shadows or in the, the front of the tree that's in the shadow. Um, and then I'm just going to start to, I'm going to almost just work my the same process back over here, only now I'm going to be using the, the oranges and the, the green and the yellow to get that highlight even more on those, on those bright sides. So I'm going to, I've got orange and green is where I'm going to start just so I can kind of see what this color is going to do. And then again, I don't want to um, go full on and cover the whole thing. I want some of those green, the original green that I had on there to shine through as well. So this is just merely um, a, a highlight in a sense, not in a sense, in, in reality. So you don't want it to overtake and be the only color on there. You want to take it and just add a highlight to it. Um, you could use a little bit of white if you feel like you need to elevate it any. So like if I want this one to be even, even more predominant, I could add a touch of white onto that brush and get this one to be right in front of the other one almost. And again, I'm just using kind of the corner of my brush, especially since I'm doing these um, more defined and littler details. Uh, that one was a little overpowering, so just corrected my brush there. The white is very important when you're doing uh, these highlights. You want it there, but you don't want it to overtake um, the painting, but you definitely need it there for these highlights. Um, so again, my combination is the yellow, uh, orange, and white. And if you find yourself running into trouble or you've overdone it, you can always go back into your original green or black or something to dull it down a little bit. Um, I do want to make sure that I that I don't put blue on my canvas. Um, I'm working with a small palette here, and and my colors are intermingling with one with one another. That's all right. Um, forgot where my train of thought was, but you definitely want to get these highlights on here and make sure that they're that they're evident, but but don't overdo it you know I mean the, you want the the illusion that there's a whole bunch of sunshine that's coming through which there really is um, and you want to know why there's light spots and dark spots but again you don't have to overdo it and make anything too powerful um, I'm probably gonna come back through here and and touch it a little bit more um, but Right now, I want to go start working on this side with my highlights. So again, green, orange, yellow, that's where I'm, I'm starting with these. And you can make them as bright or as, this is a tricky area right in through here because I know that I need it to be, have a high contrasting color next to this hill so you can definitely see the difference. So I'm gonna use a good amount of white. I'm gonna come back and dull it down a little bit here, but I definitely needed it to be bright bright, so you could see it. And again, I'm, I'm putting my brush in a, in a stroke fashion that is similar to where the direction of these leaves. So that way it, it gives you um, a better illusion as to this is the actual kind of tree that I'm painting. If I was to do this in circles or in a you know wide, you know, a different wide flat brush stroke or something, it would definitely look like a different kind of tree. 
Um, fortunately, these cypress trees have a distinct shape to them as well. So even if you don't get the brush stroke perfect, you'll at least um, be able to emulate what they are by the particular shape um, that they are because they definitely have their own distinct height and slenderness. Um, so that, that definitely makes the, the process of um, emulating them a whole lot easier because they have that distinct shape to them. And again, I'm just kind of adding these highlights of my yellow, green, orange, white to make sure I have really filled these trees in a lot. This, this one's pretty, pretty dominant over here. I like this one a lot. Um, just moving that brush in the direction that I see, making sure I get enough highlights on the ones that are really evident here. And then once I feel like I've got enough of the good highlights, what I'll end up doing is I'm gonna go back through probably on the um, shadowed side and make sure that that is fully executed as well. But I'm just kind of finishing up here with these, with these highlights, making sure that they're not too overpowering, but that they're still they're still representing these trees well. And I'm pretty happy with that, but I'm not happy with the, um, with the shadowed side. So I'm just gonna come back and make sure that I've got that fully um, colored in, because right now it's a little bit rough from that initial sketch or from the initial layer that I did. So right now I've got green and black on my brush. And this is, you know, one of those steps that you want it to um, make sure it belongs with the, with the highlighted side. So if I have to, I'll at times pick up a little bit of the highlight colors just to make sure that it works well together and that I've fully executed the entire area. And we're going to fill in the bottom in a minute with, with some shadows and um, a little bit of earth but I'm almost happy with these little trees in through here. These are the darker sides. And again, right now I'm just kind of fiddling, make, making sure that I don't have any really open spaces that I'm unhappy with. I know that you could, in actuality, there's some, some stones or something in the middle there, but again, I'm exercising my, my license and I'm not gonna be painting them. Um, because that's the beautiful part about being an artist. You get to do what you want, when you want, on your own canvas. Um, but I do dig these highlights in through here, so I wanna make sure that I've got them in there. I'm kind of fiddling with the dark side. And then i almost done here. I just wanna make sure this is all, makes me happy when I look at it, as well as making you happy, so. I'm gonna just fill, fill here for just another second. Make sure I've got some good, okay, oh, I'm pretty happy. A little bit more green. All right, so the next step, I am going to be using the big brush, but I'm gonna wash it and dry it, and we're gonna go on to the next step. All right, so what I'm doing at this point is I'm gonna be finishing the ground um, and I'm gonna be doing it with my large brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, green, yellow, and white. Um, and I just really am gonna be putting shadows underneath, shadows and like grassy stuff. So I really wanna just kind of get these um, cypress trees to land in the ground. I don't want them to look like they're hovering or floating. Um, so right now I'm using brown and green, just kind of rubbing it at the bottom of these trees. I know that there's a little bit of shadow going across the way, so I'm gonna just touch my brush into a little bit of black and give myself a couple of shadows going across this land. 
um, and maybe I'll do a little bit of a highlight to tell the difference between the land that these are sitting on and that that distant hill. I got a little spot there. Hold on one second. Um, so this little line that I just created will show the difference between the hills back there and this land in through here. And then I'm just going to kind of improv maybe a little bit of, of grass down at the bottom here. Maybe put some a little bit of ground. And again, this is just kind of adding a little bit of dimension and just giving you some stopping point for the cypress trees and to gr ground them um, so they're not floating in front of uh, or floating on the ground here. So I do see that there's grass sticking up in between them. Um, so that's why I'm incorporating some of this here. And I'm just using this big brush to give myself some texture down at the bottom of the canvas. Give myself some shadows. And I'm really not going to do a whole heck of a lot down here. Just making sure I've got it fully executed. Maybe there's some shadows in between here on the ground. So I've got some black on my brush because I know the sun is over to the left. So that's why I'm kind of bringing these shadows out in through here. And then just make sure I've got a little bit of black in through here. And then you just kind of disguise anything that you don't like with a little bit of extra grass. And that's just me taking my brush and kind of flicking it up. And then that's going to be, in essence, the final step. You could sit here and fiddle with it all day long. Um, but I am going to, well, there's one final, final step, which is done with that little tiny uh, brush that you have. So after you've got this ground nice and disguised and you've got a good assortment of pieces of grass, um, you'll put this big brush away in your water cup and then we're going to take out that uh, the tiny brush. But just give me one more second here. We'll get this where I can see it and I'm happy with it. just want to kind of dull this down a little bit. It's a little bit too yellow for me. Alright. And then again we're going to put this in your big brush. I mean in your, in your big brush, in your water cup take out your small brush and get ready for the next step, the final step. All right, so the last step to any good painting is to sign it. Um, I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. Today I'm gonna to be signing it in the bottom left. I'm gonna be using black paint only. I'm gonna be using my small brush. Uh, you can do your initials, you can do the date, uh, you can do your full name, whatever is your identifying mark is your identifying mark, so it's fine by me, whatever you choose to do. Uh, and that is gonna finish this beautiful Tuscan landscape with these uh, cypress trees. Uh, I hope you enjoy the process. I hope you love your painting, and I look forward to painting with you again soon. Thanks for watching. Please join me as I paint and sip around the world.